Russ is coming to see me for uh, some shoulder pain. He's a 40-year-old physical therapist who's had some uh, injury to the right shoulder, and uh, throwing is the problem. So I'm going to have Russ just go into a pose of uh, towards late uh, cocking phase. So go ahead, Russ, and just come up into that position. And the problem and the pain that he's incurring is somewhere in that range. So from a mechanical perspective, I'm going to want to know what's going on here as well as the uh, trunk and right on down to the hip, hip pelvis. So if you would go ahead and let's turn your back to the camera. So I'm going to be real curious what's happening in this case in the scapula related to humerus as he comes back into that position. I'm going to watch for aberrant movement, aberrant uh, control problems through the girdle. I want to see what's going on in CT, the junctional zones, TL. I'm going to want to see if you go into um, putting your left foot forward just a little bit. I want to see what is he doing to get into hip extension. Is that at the expense of some limitation up above? So from a global scale on our course, that's where we're going to go. Thanks. Okay, so Russ, I want you to just hold your hand off your belly. So one of the things we're going to look at early on in supine is the integrity of dynamic stabilizers. So for the external rotators, belly lift off, just hold here, looking for provocation and his stability, ability to hold without uh, pain and with strength, uh, i.e. integrity. I'm going to contrast that out at 45, and then I'll ultimately work up to a 90. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side of the cuff mechanism internally, and I'm going to be real curious how he looks with an abduction isometric load at both 0, 45, and approaching 90, based on the work of Fowler and others in trying to get some discretion on the state of his cuff. Also, in one of several tests we're going to look at is the integrity of the labrum. So if I use my thumb, go into the axillary area, aiming for just the inferior part of the glenoid fossa, and then I'm going to use a sensor of um, my finger up onto the top of the glenohumeral joint and palpating for a sulcus as I apply a gentle traction force through the axis of the humerus. And a sulcus sign at this point would be expected until I snug up the posterior capsule, so full internal rotation, see if there's excessive internal rotation, which may suggest some laxity, and then with full internal rotation, apply attraction for a negative or positive sulcus sign, based on the work of Petman and others. I will do the same with a full external rotation and reapply that test, also looking for excessive external rotation in that posture, and then a drawdown for excessive movement or a positive sulcus sign, indicating perhaps some state of the stability of his labrum.